Guys, I have a tutorial for the new Life 2D meta. 180 degree head turn. Okay, joking. To be honest, a 45 degree angle is sufficient for streaming, but just in case you don't want your model to be stuck perpetually on this angle, and you want your viewers to go, Whoa! Your model can turn to the side? Then I got a tutorial for you! 180 degrees is more of a flex than actually being practical, or if you're a rigger, it could be an addition to your commission price list. Obviously, charge where you're comfortable with charging, but once you master this, you can easily charge over 400 USD for this feature. You know, just a starting price recommendation, since it's pretty niche. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'm going to expand on Poopoo. You may need to follow my beginner series, at least the head XY part to understand my deformer hierarchy. And I would not classify this as a beginner tutorial because it's kind of difficult, bro. Also, this tutorial is my own process. I haven't watched other tutorials, but if you have better methods, let me know. So first, the layer preparation. I made this side profile sketch for reference. Definitely recommend it if it's your first time. And I also have the nose line and nose base that I'm going to turn into the side nose. And last, I have the entire side profile as underfill, as well as upper lip and lower lip, and their coating underfills. You could get away without this folder, like my model didn't have it, but just for consistency's sake. So now we can go ahead and import the PSD onto my poopoo -poo model. And delete the background, and I'm just recoloring my sketch so that it's more visible. Then adjust my imported file to align with the model. Some standard meshing, more centering. Then put the layers in their coding folders and deformers. Nose line and nose base goes in nose. And I previously already have a nose line, so I don't really need a new one. I just delete that. Also put nose base in nose XY. Then put all the underfills in one folder and put it under the face. And the mouth side, just over the face base. Okay, now I'm going to expand angle X. So edit the parameter and turn the maximum and minimum to 60 and negative 60. Then right click on the parameter, select to select everything attached to the parameter. Then add three key points to cover up the maximum and minimum. Slide all the way to the left and we're going to start rigging this side profile. Just adjusting my reference a bit more. I forgot how you make a guide image out of a layer instead of re-importing the whole PSD. So I'm just locking it and I start deforming on my head XY. This is the most trust the process thing I have to do in my whole rigging career. And also because my nose XY is not inside of head XY so I have to individually deform that. So I realized my nose mask is popping out, but that didn't need to be seen, so I lowered the opacity to zero. And after adding key points and deforming my nose base, I realized that my nose mask is only visible at that one key point. So I went into multiple keys editing and lowered the opacity in there so that it applies to all my key forms. So as you can see, there are a lot of things you have to fix. To hide the face line, I just inverse clipped it to my side mouth. So I tried to do most of the rigging on head XY, just because after four corner synthesizing, I can do all the four corner adjustments on head XY and keeping it minimal on all the other deformers. Okay, and I finally had enough of him staring to my soul. So I'm just gonna deform eyes XY and also eyebrows XY. So basically anything that was attached to angle XY beforehand, I can just directly deform at the side profile too. And that includes my iris XY. So continue adjusting anything that you think needs adjustments. For the mouth side, I create a deformer and I put that in head XY and I gave it key points, but I soon realized that it's doing this really weird effect when it's in head XY. When you're adjusting things inside of head XY, the things that are close to the squished border, basically, 
um, they're going to do this weird effect where they're going to stretch and then come back. And that's because the children of the squished parent deformer is moving and it's like following that squished movement that the parent deformer had. So for the mouth side, I just drag it outside of head XY and it's good. But for the minor stuff like the hair, we can leave it inside of head XY because when we synthesize corners, we'll need to put everything back in head XY again and then synthesize. And only afterwards, we can drag it outside so it fixes the weird warping motion. So all this to say, as long as the child object is attached to the same parameters as its parents, it doesn't matter if it's inside the parent anymore. Okay, and just continue rigging until your model matches your reference picture. And to fix, you know, the hair overlapping your nose, I'm basically just putting an invert mask of my side nose onto my hair. Also put the underfill as a mask too. This solution is good for short hair, but if it's longer hair, you might want to play with the draw order. Like in this example later on, I'm going to use this piece of hair to cover up that gap. But first, I have to separate my left hair to right hair. So I just copied it and erased half for one and then erased the other half for the other. And when I turn to the right, I'm going to lower the draw order just by one. If you have other hair that's on the back that's overlapping, you can lower those by two. Now I'm going to choose a portion of the hair when it's still pretty thick. Shift Control C and then Shift Control V at the side profile. So that it stays thick and covers up whatever I need to cover. And just, you know, fix all the minor things you need to fix. Attention to detail. You know, side profile is not a hard concept to do, but there's just so much fixing in all the details that it's pretty time consuming, I would say. Okay, so back to when we only had one side profile. We are going to horizontally flip it once you're done. So right click on angle X, select everything. Uh, deselect the ones that are not symmetrical, like pupil XY, but it's okay if you miss some because we can always fix it later. So horizontally reflect. I definitely missed the ears. So to fix the weird reflected stuff, you can go to X at 30, shift control C, and then go back to 60 and shift control V. And as for the side mouth, you can just flip it yourself, or I reflected it, control shift C, undo, and then control shift V. And when you are done with your two side profiles, it is now time to synthesize corners. So right click on angle X again, select everything, synthesize corners. And um, it's going to look something like this. Okay, my notes is having some problems, but it's okay. Don't worry about that for now. Actually, I recommend making the nose invisible and we're going to come back to those later. And we are now going to adjust the four corners, the scariest part. So I kind of came up with this trick. So I'll make a new parameter, call it corners, check blend shape. On head XY, add three key points. Go to angle X at negative 30 and angle Y at 30. Control shift C and then go to corners at 30, control shift V. So because blend shapes will register movements regardless of other parameter key points, but as long as I register this tilting motion, I can go to the side profile and apply that tilting motion here.
Okay, but we're gonna do the same for angle Y at negative 30. So shift copy it and paste it on corners at negative 30. So it's gonna look a bit something like this. Obviously the nose is messed up, but it's okay, we're gonna fix the nose later. So I just made the nose visible, and now I'm gonna use a blend shape to like choose a point in the model where I feel like it fits the tilting at the side profile. Control shift C and go back to angle X at negative 60, Y at 30, corners at zero, and control shift V. Um, play around with the head to see if the motion is smooth. Um, and I feel like I could use a bit more tilting. So I just use my corner blend shape again and then shift copy paste it. So the same thing with angle Y at negative 30, um, this time the corner is at negative 30 and I choose a point and shift copy paste it. So now the general tilting motion is done, I'm gonna start manually adjusting things. But you're gonna notice that Live2D does not like your deformers overlapping. And when you use the green dots, it's gonna have this weird bug. So we cannot use the green dots now. We're gonna use deform brush. Okay, but before, this folded face shadow is bugging me very much. And that's because of how head XY is just folding upon itself. So I'm gonna fix this by selecting the folding part. Find a spot where it's not folding upon itself. Control shift C and Control shift V. So do the same for the upward tilting. I find that the hair is folding too much upon itself over here. So I just select it, apply the face, and shift copy paste it. You can probably tell by now that this is my favorite function to use in Live2D. And the free version does not have this function, so make use of the free trial, please. And now I finally remember to check how the mouth open looks at the side profile, and I realized that there's this bug thingy, and it's because of the lower lip folding upon itself. You really need to find the root of these problems, and for me, I think it's because these dots are too close when the mouth opens, so I just need to move it lower. Okay, now I'm gonna make my nose and mouth side visible. Um, they look atrocious um, because they're inside of head XY and following head XY's spherical motion, which does not fit the nose. So we're gonna drag that outside and resynthesize corners only for the nose. And here I realize I haven't added all the parameters for mouth side. So I'm gonna go ahead and add angle Y so that it will inherit the angle Y from nose XY. And so now I can drag it outside. So at this point, this is my hierarchy. Now I can start manually adjusting the nose, along with the face, you know, everything else later on. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit to adjust the mouth. The way I have it set up, it's pretty straightforward. Just attach two keyframes to mouth open on the lower lip and its underfill, and just drag it down when the mouth opens. And my upper list also had some movement, so I just moved that too. And I forgot to do this here, but you should also probably deform the inner mouth XY a bit more. If you have V-Bridger, you have to consider the V-Bridger parameters too. A mouth X, mouth shrug, cheek puff, and jaw open probably need the nose and the side mouth to also be attached to it and do some movements. Now we need to adjust the hair at the four corners. You're going to notice a bit difficulty when you're trying to adjust the hair while it's still inside of head XY. And we only needed it inside of head XY to synthesize corners. Now that's done, we can drag it outside of head XY. And just continue deforming with the brush. So 
So when I'm rigging the ears, I also drag that outside of head XY. So we're almost done at this point. You're going to notice that the emotes are not working well with the side profile. So what I do is that I make a deformer on top of the emotes. And let's pretend there are other emotes inside this deformer like scared and stuff. So I'm going to attach it to all my X and Y key points. Drag that outside of head XY. Shift copy paste the point where it's not folding as much. Like, it's gonna come off the face a little bit, but it's okay, in my opinion. It's just a minor little thing. It's better than it folding upon itself. Yeah, so I reflect the motion, and I drag the emotes deformer back in head XY to synthesize corners, only for the emotes. Do not ever touch the head XY synthesize corners ever again. And when that's done, I can drag my emotes outside of head XY. So another thing I found out while testing is that my ears will go through the face um, because it's layered in front of the face. So I'm going to move it to the back of the face, um, but I also want it in front of that layer of hair. So I'm just going to inverse clip my ears to that hair. But then his balding head is strung through, so I just indented his skull. Yeah, that's a fix. So one last little detail fixing you can do is you can add a key point to somewhere really close to negative 60, like negative 50. Because I find that while tracking, your face rests at around this key point fairly often. So you will want it to look perfect, like make the cheeks puffier and pay more attention to the nose. But do remember that each key point you add on angle X, um, there's two more on angle Y you have to rig. So let's say you are finally ready to export. Well, put all the textures in the textures atlas. You would want to invert the angle Y and angle Z at side profile because you'll notice when you nod, there, that's still tracking angle Y, but angle Y side profile is tilting. Instead of doing it in Live 2D, I have been told a much easier way, which is to do it with vBridger functions. I followed the amazing hamster crumbs functions and it saves my life. Link in the description just if you want more accurate side profile tracking. But honestly, if you don't want to pay for custom vBridger, you can get away without this. And finally, the last thing to do is to adjust the range of face left right rotation, which is angle X, and also body X, and you are done. Congratulations! Okay, actually, you're probably going to find more bugs when you're testing, uh, and you're going to go back to life duty and fix it. Like, I probably forgot things too, and it's not super polished, like some hair is kind of bad looking, but it's okay. Good luck, guys!